I don't know about you guys, but this time change always messes me up. Don't get me wrong. I guess it's nice to get an extra hour of sleep over the weekend, but it always feels later than it really is. Okay, we're not here to talk about that or dispute the time change. We're going to talk about the weather today, and we're going to start off with what's going on in the Arctic. In this video, we're also looking at a, uh, a hurricane maybe forming here in the Caribbean, moving north. We're going to take a look at some of the tracks of that. Also, we've got a severe weather day on the way as we head into Monday, and there could be a, quite a bit of severe weather here with maybe even some tornadoes. So a lot to get into today. First, before we dive into the details, I want to say thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. It is blown me away. We blew through 9,000 subscribers on this small channel. We blew through 9,300 just overnight, and it just keeps going up. So thank you guys so much for subscribing and coming back. All right, let's start off with our severe weather as we head into Monday. This will be the main issue, I think, that we've got to watch an enhanced area here into parts of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, even into parts of Missouri. And there will be likely some severe weather up here, too, into parts of Illinois, as far south as the Gulf Coast. The issue will be strong damaging winds, and we're also probably going to see some tornadoes. In fact, the National Weather Service has hashed out this area right here into Oklahoma, down into North Texas, and even into parts of Arkansas. There is a significant chance of some tornadoes as we head through the day. We've got a strong upper-level trough back to the west. Really, it's an upper-low here with that cold air aloft. Also, we're going to get quite a bit of, uh, of wind shear, too, and that's going to really cause those storms to fire up. Here we go through the day Monday morning. Rain showers and storms going here across Arkansas. Arkansas, but back here is your upper low, and then here comes that wind shear increasing. We've got dew points that are really high. Now as we get into the afternoon and evening hours, supercells here with these storms, especially across Oklahoma, Texas, as we move to the evening hours. It's hard to believe that we're talking about this type of severe weather set up in November. And in fact, if you look at things, there's a bit of a bump in tornado weather across the deep south as we head into December. As we move into Monday night, these will start to line up a little more linear in fashion. So your supercells but we'll probably still have a few, but your tornado risk will start to go down. But definitely stay weather aware and have a way to get warnings as we get into the overnight hours. And then things start to settle down some on Tuesday. The severe risk, not nearly as high as what we're going to see on Monday. All right, that's what we're looking at with the severe weather. Let's talk about the winter weather, at least the winter outlook. I've been talking about this the last couple of days. This is a bit of a different look here. Look at this jet stream just screaming into the West Coast. Right here is North America, the United States. Uh, up here is Alaska. And here in the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of Japan, which is right here, you've got a lot of warm water. We're clearly getting colder across the Arctic. And with this warmer water here, that jet stream is just screaming in. We're getting huge storms that are forming in the Gulf of Alaska. And this is going to continue to just pound, I think, the northwest United States, also western parts of Canada, especially up into the mountains with more snow. A quick look at the pattern setting up. There's that upper low that we're watching as we head into Monday. That's going to cause all the severe weather here. Another warm day in the east with an upper high here. Good southwest flow all the way into New England. The Northeast, the Great Lakes, and the Southeast Canada. It is warm here, a little bit below average here across Western Canada into the Northwest United States. And look at this, another storm moving into Alaska. That's going to bring another round of heavy rain and snow and another trough digging into the West as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. I don't know if this retrogrades like this, but we've seen that over the last couple of runs. Maybe so. That might bring us another round of severe weather, and that could bring some rain and snow here into the far Southwest as we head into Friday and Saturday. These upper lows, I'm gonna tell you, these are tricky. And I think it's gonna be even trickier now that at about this time, we're gonna have something likely tropical here in the Caribbean moving north. Will that interact with our tropical system? I think that's to be determined, but that would certainly be a player if it's there when the storm comes north. Here's where the ensembles have our system as we move into Wednesday and Thursday. Remember that upper low would be across the Southwest. A decent ridge here driving everything kind of like this. So. The chances of something moving up into the Gulf are getting more and more likely. The official forecast from the National Hurricane Center has this becoming a, a tropical storm, eventually a hurricane, and then potentially moving across western Cuba. Does that tear it up a little bit? I don't know. I think if you're in the Keys, though, really anywhere along the Florida coast all the way back into the Texas coast, you want to watch this because there's a lot of questions. Where does this thing go once we get toward the end of the week? A lot of the forecast models continue to bring this thing north, northwest, and then eventually kind of curving it north. There's a lot of consensus here, but nothing's written in stone, and we're just looking at forecast modeling here. This is a quick look at one of the hurricane models, and you know it shows it becoming a pretty strong storm here, maintaining hurricane status 
as we head into Friday and Saturday, although the official forecast is for this to be uh, maybe even downgraded to a tropical storm, I don't know if that happens. I mean, if we don't have a lot of wind shear here, I could see this thing staying a hurricane. So stay tuned on that as we continue to refine that forecast. Okay, let's take a look at the week ahead. We'll time all of this out for you as we sort of just recenter here across North America. Find where you are here. High pressure holding on for at least one more day here into the Northeast. There's your storms out into the, the central United States. A lot of snow falling here across the Rockies. Another storm moving into the Pacific Northwest. And look, there's our storm across Alaska that we've been talking about. That storm that forms here in the plains will lift toward the Great Lakes. It could bring a little bit of snow on the back side of it here into parts of northern Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, maybe. I'm not so sure of that. As this front moves to the east, though, as we've seen pretty much all fall, it doesn't make much headway. It kind of falls apart. Now, this is the operational GFS, so don't pay too much attention to exactly where this hurricane goes. It's going to try to give you something wacky and bring it up maybe into Florida. Although, I don't think that's too wacky. It may actually end up doing that. Uh, but this is just one run. I still think we're so far out now. You've got to look at the ensemble guidance, which gives you the different solutions and sort of figure out the mean. There's that upper low I was talking about across the southwest. That doesn't pull it north faster. Again, these upper lows, the models have a really hard time. I'm just going to tell you, they do a terrible job of forecasting these five, six, seven days out. You'll see drastic swings, and I would just say stay tuned and keep a, uh, an eye on things across the Gulf Coast. All right, now as we move into the weekend, this is going to continue to spin here across the, the central part of the country if this holds true. But I think this stormy pattern is going to persist as we head into the weekend into next week. Look at this, guy; It's just continuing to pound the West Coast. I don't think that changes. It's one of the reasons we're going to see a tremendous amount of snow here. Ski season, man, what a start. Over the next week, maybe one to two feet of snow into Colorado, down into New Mexico, too. We may see up to three feet in some areas. And then across western Canada, that snow continues to pile up here, too. Uh, really here uh, from Alaska, the coastal ranges here, down into British Columbia, up into the mountain areas of Banff here. Not a lot spilling east of the mountains, though. Again, I mentioned this yesterday, to Edmonton down to Calgary. Not a lot of snow here out into the prairies, and same could be said even for parts of, uh, of the northern plain states here in the United States. Not a lot of snow. And even inland here, while there will be some snow, not a lot. Not, not a lot of moisture. It's all getting wrung out here in the mountains as these storms drop in out of the Gulf of Alaska into the northwest. Look at the European weeklies where they're focusing all the snow across the west. This makes total sense to me, and, and I'm in agreement with this. Clearly, we're starting to see our averages of snow starting to shift south. I mean, you're going to see that with these long-range forecast outlooks. Ed. It's, it's just the way it is. But I, I, I do agree that we are going to continue to see more snow across the Northwest as this jet stream just continues to pound the West Coast. I love reading your comments below. Some of them are great. Some of them I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Please. It never ceases to amaze me. It takes everyone to make the world go round, I guess. Come back. I'll see you tomorrow.